Okay, it's June 26th, Saturday, and we are here at the National Soaring Museum. Spent the night here. It is very windy. I don't think they're going to be doing any gliding today. Maybe later this afternoon if it closes up. But uh, we're going to visit the museum today, uh, a couple of hours. Probably leave here between 2.30 and 3 this afternoon. Our next check-in is not until 4 o'clock this afternoon at the Corps of Engineers. Kind of a late check-in, but uh, we'll hang out here kind of late. Not a big rush. And uh, just take our time. And uh, I think at the Corps of Engineers we have electric and water, but no sewer hookups. But that's okay. Looks like our Class C left. We have a truck camper here now. All right. Okay. Windy, windy. I don't know whether you can see that flag of flopping or not, but it is very windy here. You see the cell plane? They've got the two, three. They are hanging from the ceiling in there. Um, dedicated. 1982. NSM. All right. Let's see what Kathy's doing. Open 10 to 5. Very nice people here. Nice camp area. Well, it looks like the parking lot's cleaned out. There were a few cars this morning, so I might be able to make a turnaround. It looks like in that short walk, they've already closed up the hangar up here. I guess they decided no flying for a while. Okay. And then we get we do this first and then we gotta come back and watch. Watch the video. Now Myers first cell plane down here. <laughs> it's funny people were thinking of oh look at that. Yeah. yeah. Thinking about it. What's mm -hmm. a borrow graph? Oh, okay. Does that do uh presentation how long you've been in the air? There's a barometer to you up. Wow. You can have these trophies. Goodness. Hey, we got a flying dog. How was your night last night? It was just fine. Good. Very good. <laughs> got a waggy tail there. definitely one of our favorite places so far. We've oh, saved a lot of our harvest so Where's your next point of call? Um, well, actually, we're just going about We're just going about 45 minutes from here. Hello. Two nights to a Corps of Engineers park. Then we'll go to past Binghamton to pick up my aunt, and we'll head to an uncle's house in Maine. Very good. So, <laughs> Bridge soaring. Nice. Everybody's so nice here. Um, This is it. It doesn't have wings on it. But that is it. Yeah. Man. Nineteen thirty. Get a perspective of it. I'll let you stand by it. Oh. Okay. So, so simple, but Elmira's first sailplane. It's so simple. It's just got a couple of attachment points for the wings. It's aluminum. Okay, and wood seat. Wow. An old wood stick. Look in there. Can you get it? <laughs> I think so. Wow. Barely room for legs. It's got feathers. Just I haven't really changed them any since then. Look at the wheel down there. 
No. That took some courage. I'd say. It's sort of like the first wow. person, first person that ate an oyster was very brave, you know. <laughs> I think this was brave. <laughs> so this is the restoration shop. <laughs> Snoopy. Don't touch. Oh, they're letting us in the in the restoration shop. Let's just welcome. Okay. It's all wooden. I saw one of those one one time before. A wooden Harley. Don't touch. I want to touch it. I want to pull the clutch in. I think the chain is wood. The belts aren't, but the chain. Well, part of it is. The little you think so? In the middle are wood. Look at that. Cylinders, the breather, air breather, and the exhaust pipe. All this is wood. The wheels are all wood. Of course, I don't think the, uh, I'm not going to touch it, but I imagine the, the tires are wood too. That's nice work. Six E. The Schweitzer is really a famous. That's password for the Wi-Fi over there. You know, I didn't know it sounded kind of funny when he gave it to me, but that's the password. Schweitzer, one two six. Well, <laughs> anyway, he wants to get on the Wi-Fi. So it didn't have the hyphen between the two and a six. It was just Schweitzer 126. Man, this is how they restore everything. South Carolina. South Carolina? How about you? Yeah. I'm from Cincinnati. Oh. oh. I've been here before. As a matter of fact, I was here just before. A little after a couple years after it opened up, my wife and relatives are out here. Oh, she got to fly on one yesterday. Yeah, I know. Beautiful weather yesterday. 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 Our field is good thermal force. Really? Marsh is no thermal. Wow. Uh -huh. And town is good lift. Man, we're making mistakes in this stuff. Well, expanded in 89. Look at all these contributors. Now that you've seen that area, um, we go down these stairs, most of the museums on the bottom. Okay. If you go around the winch truck and the bald eagle that's below the landing, there's a mural. There's a door to the left, basically right where that door is, and it's a room this size. Okay. Right below us, it's full of dollhouses and miniatures. Oh, okay. Uh, the director and his wife and I worked at a um, former museum, and they did an upgrade over us when we jumped the shark. There's me. Good. Hi, folks. I'm Trash hey. Doherty. That's the same. To the National Story Museum today. At this museum, you're going to learn about American soaring from the our friend. 19th century up to the present. We have a lot of sailplanes here to show you, and I know you're going to find it very interesting. Thank you for coming today. Interesting gliding goes way back to the mid 19th century with the experiments of Sir George Cayley, the English pioneer of aerial navigation and aeronautical engineering and designer of the first successful glider to carry a human being aloft in 1853. Look at that. From there, experimentation continued in Europe and the Americas. A notable American experimenter was Octave Chanute, who in Chanute. the 1890s designed a number of successful gliders. American aviation pioneers such as Samuel Langley, the Wright that. brothers, and Glenn Curtis were all influenced His by Chanute. His model was at the Indiana Dunes. The type of writer pictured as a Chanute design changed in 1896 and is what we would refer to today as a hang glider. It was controlled by shifting body weights side to side and back and forth. 
In the years 1901 to 1902, the Wright brothers made over a thousand glider flights at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Through the course of this process, they perfected the aerodynamics of the design and were able to thoroughly master their system of control. To achieve powered flight essentially required adding an engine and propellers to this glider to make the 1903 Wright Flyer. For the Wright brothers, experimentation with gliders was a necessary step to achieving powered flight. In 1911, Orville Wright returned to Kitty Hawk with the intention of trying to remain aloft for an extended period on the winds rising up the slopes. He was successful in his experiment to the extent that he remained aloft for 9 minutes and 45 seconds, making the first soaring flight in the world. This was the pivotal flight that changed gliding flight into soaring flight. Before this flight, gliding flights were measured in seconds, not minutes. Take note of the fact that the Wrights were first in powered flight in 1903 and first in soaring in 1911. The next efforts to advance soaring came from Germany. After World War I, Germany was forbidden to have powered aircraft by the Treaty of Versailles, so German pilots turned their attention to gliders and sailplanes. Much of the soaring in Germany was done over an area known as the Wasserkuppe, northeast of Frankfurt, much admired for its ideal terrain for soaring. The possibilities of soaring at Elmira. The NGA then arranged to have Jack O'Mara travel from Akron, Ohio to Elmira with his Baker McMillan cadet to try out the site personally. On July 2nd, 1930, he made an outstanding flight of one hour and 38 minutes soaring from South Mountain, wow. just south of Elmira. The first soaring flight made in the Elmira area. The success of this flight convinced the NGA to make Elmira, New York, their official contest site. The terrain in Elmira's Shimon Valley was found to be remarkably similar to that of the Vasakuba. Because of these favorable conditions and the enthusiastic recommendation of both Don Klepper and Jack O'Mara, American soaring had found a home at Elmira, New York. The 1,800 feet enabled the use of auto tows, winch tows, and ultimately airplane tows. The field was unofficially named in memory of Lieutenant Hank Harris, a member of the MIT Soaring Club who had been killed a few weeks earlier in an auto towing accident. Won third place for being the first metal sailplane built in the United States. Shortly afterward, the brothers formed the Schweitzer Metal Aircraft Company, and the Schweitzer aircraft business was off to a good start. Shown here in the drafting table are Paul, Ernie, and Bill Schweitzer, designers and producers of some of Soaring's most iconic sailplanes. During World War II, was conducted at Harris Hill. Training gliders in World War II carry the designation TG, being training gliders. The EASC board decided to change its name to Harris Hill Soaring Corporation. More of soaring pilots, and our example won the 1934, 1935, and 1936 national contest here on Harris Hill. Here with you. At the National Soaring Museum, we have a Waco CG4 troop carrying glider from World War II. They built almost 14,000 of these things yeah. during the war. And they saw use in several theaters in the Far East, in Sicily, and also in Normandy in 1944, D-Day. Upwards of 400 of these were used to ferry troops, supplies, ordnance, in the case of a 75 millimeter field gun, oh say a Jeep, would carry all of these things not at once. They're quite effective, but there were some downsides. The glider flew well, it was advertised, in the hands of a competent pilot, but get the load of the, the people and materials to where they should be. The environment itself is incredibly hostile. These are towed into a combat area at 100 miles an hour, usually a low altitude, say 1,000 feet. And the tow plane was, a, of course, a C-47 twin-engine transport. Very noisy. You could hear them coming from a long ways away. So they were sitting ducks for any aircraft fire. And many were shot down, tow planes and gliders. And also, the enemy was not receptive to having these things landing at their doorstep. So they litter the landing areas with chunks of concrete, archive storage, and a restoration shop. In 2003, additional space was added, which included the Schweitzer Gallery and the Blossom Gallery. Yeah. Look at this. That's a tow truck. Oh, yeah. Man, look at this. 37 DuPont. No, this is a replica of the Wright Brothers. 1902 glider. Okay. It's amazing they could design that. 
shock cord. It's like a big rubber band, eh? Yep. That's the wolf. Yeah. And nothing overhead. Germany. It's funny that they they were developers of soaring out of necessity because they were banned from having engines. Yeah. So they went to, to flying that, huh? engineless planes or soars yeah. and developed all this. <laughs> mm-hmm. People have to pause and read. Yeah. Man, does that look to the U.S. Navy jet? And then they looks like it. It looks like they took it up in a jet and turned it loose. Yeah, eh? it does. Man. That's how it worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It didn't give you much protection, but I guess it kept your ears warm, eh? Mm-hmm. It's funny how that one, the wings were coming over with this other one. They don't have enough room to put all their gliders in here, so they stack them on top of each other. Man, look at this. This is the dollhouse collection. Look at the rooftop deck. George, George, and. Talk about dolls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look at all these. Mm-hmm. <laughs> look at these dishes. Cloth with tub. Yeah. You don't realize how detailed this stuff is. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. To back up to get the scope of how big it is. Yeah. yeah. And look at. Man, yeah, he's got the lights in here. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and upstairs, they even got my globe. Look at this, babe. Yep. It's just like the one that we have in storage, wherever. Yeah. Hey, look at this fancy furniture. Capitas furniture. Yeah. That fireplace, all that gold. Oh, yeah, the old leaf. It's Capitas or Trump. <laughs> yeah. Do not stuff. touch. Hey, your bathtub. Yeah. Your Cinderella. So detailed. Mm-hmm. And to get the scope of it, it's just. Right, brothers? Yeah. Wilbur and Orville Wright.
Look at this. This swath of cloth is from the lower right wing of the original 1903 Kitty Hawk, North Carolina right flyer plane. That's really something. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That one there is the replica. Yeah. Hundred and twenty seven models. Sailplanes. Look at that. The latest fashion craze is the glider matches your auto. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our For tow our tow vehicle matching our R V, right? Yeah. That was the way to do it back then. It's funny that replica was hanging in the Indiana Dunes Visitor Center. Yeah. Yeah, who picked These are all the replicas. Look at this. And it tells you about them down here. Or, you know, tells you all the details about it. Yep. I mean, you could spend forever in here if you wanted to research certain yeah. models of Steel cell planes. But wooden wings. Which one is that? This is a Schweitzer SG S1944. Number 47, the yellow one. Okay. What's that futuristic looking thing there? The 45? 46. Oh, 46. The Horton. Horton, 1941. It can't be. They only built four of them. High performance flying wing. That's 46. The bell shaped lift distribution. Man, that was built in 1941. I mean, that is really. That is something. Yeah. That looks like something Space Force would build now. Yeah. That looks like a. That's yeah. 1954. Yeah, I guess modern looking. So. Look how short that body is. On yeah. 93. Wingspan's 42 feet, but. It's pretty short with the. It's just. Basically a wing. <laughs> 1968, yeah. A deaf pilot has made many flights above 20,000 feet. Yeah. Hence the plane's nickname, the Deaf Hawk. Jeez. Yeah, that's a big, big wing, too. They're like this. Yeah. Sky Ghost. That's a baby albatross. Mm -hmm. It was in that movie. Okay. And it's all wood. You would think that would be heavier. Well, this was a baby albatross, the last of three. Can you imagine getting in there? Well, well the, the doors are hinged, see? And yeah, still. You just flip up. This is tiny, though, for the front person. Yeah, that's called the lighter side of life. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. 
imagine being yeah. a soldier in this thing and there's no motor and they just and turn you loose yeah. and well the towing vehicle was and then they just they just say find a place to land glad to sing down into the uh, something by a small tree didn't have a parachute that is crazy oh my gosh why <laughs> you were in that is incredible for that for sure and it's a one time use vehicle in war they just take it up and turn it loose and that's it they like got uh, skis on the bottom the skits yep something. Wow. Man. This is something. I cannot imagine being a soldier in World War II. And no parachute. They say, get in. We're going to haul you up behind an airplane and turn you loose. And you're going to land who knows where, right? In Germany, in some trees and get beat up or shot at. That is amazing. Totally crazy. What do you think, babe? Would you like to have flown in this? No. No parachute, no nothing? They take you up and turn you loose? No. And say, good luck, boys. These are nice looking bladders. Look at that. That is really a clean looking glider there now. Man. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Introduced in 1964. Is it just cotton or something? It feels like a uh, raincoat. S silk? Material. No? No, more like raincoat or an umbrella. Yeah. This one. Oh, I know. You saw my knees in that when I was sitting in, I was scrunched up in that one yesterday flying. They'll let you get in this one, babe. Go ahead and sit down and oh, see. Yeah. You can do it. You got the pedals in the front. I always wondered if you got an obstinate passenger, if you're a pilot and you you doing the controls. He was framing that stick, hit me in in an unprotected area yesterday, and I kept saying, ah. Oh, I'll try to go easy. Why didn't you sit up for it? Well, I did. After a couple of times, I started sitting up straight. First time he hit me, it was, it was not pleasant. That stick went bang. <laughs> okay, you got my attention now. <laughs> Come on, baby, you can do it. I did it. Of course, I had a couple more places to hold on to. Collins. Was this one of the women that got killed in the? No, I don't think this is the challenger. I don't think is so. It? This is, I don't know. First woman to pilot the space shuttle in 1995. Oh, that's a big glider. You know, coming down. <laughs> it is. Yeah, soaring into his. 
Yep, it's probably the biggest glider ever made. Yeah. Was, oops, I banged it. The space shuttle. He's the one that said. One giant leaf for man commits one small step for man. They don't know whether they said a man or man, eh? I guess. And who cares? Well, they spent millions of dollars trying to, people listening to the recording and they still couldn't determine it. be part of the club over there. Nope. All the Schweitzers. Yes. They have ex exhibits all the way down that ball. All the way down this wall of all the Schweitzers. Tap the photo. Wow. 18, 17, and 12. Schweitzer was such a big name in uh, the gliding the industry. Gliding, gliding. Yeah. I guess you'd have to. Man, yeah. 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 It's a drone. It's 1971. Huh. It's like a drone that people go in. I don't know. It's like an airplane well, no, drone. Well, no, drones are meant to be. Pilot less. This is the 136. The 126 is the famous one. It was coming at the end. Yep. This is the password, Schweitzer126. <laughs> Nobody cares, babe. They cover the history. The plane, especially gliders here, pretty, pretty good. Okay. The dingy dingy. He was leading the race. 
Hey, they got toys that fly. They sound like my toys. Uh-huh. <laughs> National Soaring Museum. All right, then. Uh, we will get... Pardon? Yeah, but I'm not going to... Yeah. Those are the gliders over here that actually fly. Do I see puzzles that makes me think you're wrong? Yeah. <clears throat> Please. Yep, it's me. Thank you. Still kind of breezy. But there's one car parked all down, all the way down, blocking my escape route. I might can swing it around it. Mm -hmm. Make a turn there when we decide to leave. I wonder if they're waiting for the wind to calm down. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a whole bunch of them down there. The wind is kind of dying down a little. <laughs>